Welcome to the Uncle Hack Podcast, where dudes pretty much just talk dude shit. Welcome to the Uncle Hack Podcast. The podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, another episode, another week. I'm well rested. I'm doing this liver cl- Ah, fuck it. Hold on. One second. July 29th, White Court, Alberta. August 6th, the Danger Room is back in Calgary, Alberta. August 26th, Edmonton, Alberta. September 24th, Vancouver, British Columbia. And finally, the cats are heading to America, Minneapolis, Minnesota, in the Mall of America, October 1st and December 3rd, Plano, Texas. All tickets available at DangerCatShop.com. So, you know what? I, I, yeah, I read the hate mail before the show, right? And we'll get into the one. It was concerning email, and I like that. And it says, hack, you ain't going hard enough. I'm not going hard. I'm getting soft. It doesn't say that exactly, but you know what? In a way, you're right. And that's what I like about this audience. See, when you have a nice audience, you don't need a big audience. You need a, (laughs) well, you do, right? I wish it was bigger. Am I going to sit here and lie? Do I wish that I was in the position of some of these comedians that are touring around the countryside selling $200 tickets? Yes, I want that. I want to be very clear. Okay, I'm not going to pretend like the. I'm not going to try and be humble right now, right? And be like, oh, hack, you're so humble. Ah, no, I would love that, but I don't have that. Maybe one day I will. Maybe, maybe. We can play the maybe game all we want, but I have a nice audience that keeps me honest. You know, that's the nice thing about not being too big, but also not too small. Just big enough that people feel the need to tell you that you're a retard. That's that's the joy of this. You know, we we spend so much time, and maybe I have been self-censoring. I don't believe I have been, but maybe subconsciously... <laughs> I have been doing such a thing to myself. And why would I do that? I don't know. As if I'm trying to cater to an, a different audience, maybe somebody who's tuning in looking for a soundbite. Yeah, right. Like I have anybody hate watching me right now. You know what? That ship has sailed. I wish, I wish that there was people hate watching me clipping this, putting it all over the internet and being like, this guy is a buffoon. He's a jackass. Do not go and see his stupid little comedy show. Anyways, we'll get into that more uh, later. A few things that I've been doing. You know what? I I am. I'm getting a little kumbaya these days. Uh, I've I've been a conspiracy theorist now for 48 hours. No, I'm joking. I've been hitting this liver cleanse, you know, uh, trying it out, seeing what it's all about, right? After many years of uh, destroying my liver and uh, all the receptors in my brain from... uh, substances that you would get from a lovely man in an older Mercedes Benz or probably a Chrysler 300, I've now decided that maybe I should take care of this vessel, you know, so I can further myself. Maybe I can push my finish line a little further down. You know what? I had myself tapping out at about 38 and I look at 38 and be like, ah, that's too soon. So we're trying to extend it a little. I'm trying this liver cleanse out. You put fucking olive oil, lemon juice into this cayenne pepper. You knock it back. And apparently it's supposed to cleanse the liver. So I'll update you next week. I'm doing that this week. I'm giving her a go. Okay? And I'm not sitting here trying to be like, hey, look at how great I am. Look at how healthy I am. Look how great I am as a human being that I decide to take care of my body at the ripe age of 32, you know, instead of... Ugh. destroying it with substances. Now, don't kid yourself. I love me a good substance, but fortunately, uh, that road needed to come and uh, to a dead end, and we needed an alternate route. You know what I mean? Rerouting, rerouting. But 
One of my favorite pastimes I, I've been doing now, you know, you got to find cheap entertainment in the city. And one thing that I've been doing uh, lately is at nighttime after shows or something like that, I go and venture in the downtown core, you know. I go and venture about, I see what the city, I see what the night brings. Because that's where the real action is. You know, daytime crackheads, also very entertaining. Not as entertaining as what the nighttime crackheads bring. There is an assortment of them and in, in where they pop up and how they pop up. It's, it's quite entertaining. You know what? I, I recommend this. If you're from out of town, right, and you're coming into this city for a concert, maybe a comedy show or whatever it may be, maybe just a day at a mall, right? Because nothing says good old North American pastime like some consumerism at some big box stores, right? And Moses, when, when, when it comes time and you've spent all your money and the entertainment is uh, depleted because your wallet has been sucked dry, I recommend doing this. Loading up the family, pack some snacks, cheap snacks. You know, you don't need a $200 night at the movie theater. What are they even putting out these days that is worthy of your coin to go out there? The writers are on strike. The fucking movies aren't being produced. What are you going to do? Sit at home and watch some of that fucking garbage that they put on Netflix? No, you got to get out and see the world for what it is. We love to sit online and look at it. Go see it for your with your own eyes. So I recommend packing the kids, the wife, and the truck, the car, whatever you're means of transport is hell go on the city bus be right in the action get some snacks and go see what the night creatures are up to you know the fentanyl addicts what are they stealing what songs are they dancing to in their head on the street corner that's what i like to do that's what i did with my friend this weekend you know he was up here from uh, my hometown we got together went for a little bite to eat and i was like have you seen the city and he goes, not really. It was a bit terrifying outside of our hotel. And I was like, well, I have a vehicle. So we're somewhat safe inside the vehicle. We can have a conversation. We're not on high alert. We can get out of the area if need be. Let's go for a little gander of the downtown core of Edmonton. What do you say about that? And him and his wife were like, yes, that sounds magnificent. And I was like, this is the cheap entertainment that I can offer you. You could come to a comedy show of mine. But it doesn't have the same effect as seeing someone shitting their pants with a needle in their arm. You know, that right there is something you remember. Uh, you'll forget my dumb little joke that I wrote that I've spent hours and hours trying to perfect to make an audience laugh, you know, because that's how... That's how deeply selfish I am. I just need those laughs. I need those laughs. And it just, it's one foot behind the other, and away from the ledge, right? So I loaded him up in the car, took him and his wife for a little drive downtown, and it is magnificent. And I got to say, it's in every city. It doesn't matter where you are. It's universal. It's across America. It's, uh, it's across Canada, which seems to be most of the listenership that that tunes into this podcast, Canadians and Americans. And I recommend you and your family load up in your uh, whatever means of transportation, go for a little waltz downtown and show the kids this is what happens when mommy and daddy don't love you, okay? This is what happens when... <laughs> this is what happens when people touch you in places that... That you shouldn't be touched in a in a in an underage <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> you this is what happens when children don't do their homework. When you don't do your homework, this is where you end up. So get your shit together. Do your ABCs, your one, two, threes. Because mommy and daddy would hate to drop you off here and live with the zombie people. Wouldn't that be fun? Do you want to be with the zombie people that make obscure noises at random times? They yell at the sky. But I tell you, cheap entertainment. You know, why allow it to affect you negatively 
when you can have a positive effect. See, that's why people love me. I find the silver lining in everything. People are like, the downtown core is unsafe. I don't know. I don't know why anybody would want to be downtown anyways. It's never been fun. It's loud. There's obnoxious people everywhere. P kids are doing TikToks in food courts, right? They're doing TikToks in the middle of the street. They're running out there trying to go to get a quick photo shoot. There's fist fights. There's too many people, which usually coincides with problems. But if you can take that and mold it into a form of your own entertainment without having to pay an internet bill or a movie ticket or logging into Netflix, you get off the couch, you get to see what your city's producing, you know, it, it can be fun for everybody. So I highly recommend that, you know, that's how, that's how we solve this problem. You know, everybody's like, I can't believe you would film them and put them on the internet. Oh, what do you want me to do? You know, what do you want me to do? I'm entertained by this. I'd be selfish to keep it to myself. I'm a giving person. The things that I see, uh, many people always bring up. I loved when you used to film everybody from your office window. And that was a that was a positive from the office window is looking down. The Instagram story always had fights. We've seen some good fights. There's always some sort of menacing behavior that was taking place. And that was a, the beauty of that. But but see, me, I like peace and quiet. I'm, I come from a small town where not much noise happens. You know, when dogs start barking, people got angry. Where, where down there, it's like sirens and uh, addicts yelling at, at, at invisible people that are around the corner. They think the government's watching them, right? And And... Kind of, they are, in a way. If you consider me the government, I was keeping a close eye on those suckers down there and making sure we were capturing any any form of entertainment that I could put on social media for a clout for myself, but also to entertain the masses. That's what we do around here, right? That's what we do. Because I am a giving person. Now, who also is a giving person when it comes to all sorts of information? information uh first let's let's read the tweet okay uh ingram angle shed or shreds canadian prime minister justin trudeau after he expressed his outrage that canadian muslims are thinking for them his outrage that canadian muslims are thinking for themselves i think they meant th not thinking for themselves okay because right now big trudy is trying to blame the far right of America for the Muslims hating the gays, right? Allah arm bar, WrestleMania, hell in a cell, top of the towers, baby, is to is is not cr critical of his own thinking. And thank God Laura Ingram is here, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna tune into a little Fox News segment and have a little fun with this. Because I like seeing what America thinks about Canada, right? I love when American uh, people come up here and we can tell them, no, nah, it's actually, it's it's a shithole here. It's it's not this socialist haven that we painted out to be, well, I'll just go get my feelings checked at the hospital for free. And it's like, yeah, well, you're going to be waiting four and a half hours for those feelings to be checked. So... What is it? What are we bragging about up here? Up north, as in Canada. All right. All right over the Oops. weekend, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau expressed we've ruffled some feathers up north. That a girl? In Canada. All right. Over what are you doing? You taking my job from me, you stupid bitch? What an asshole. That's my job. Okay? That's my job. You silly whore. Unreal. I thought I was the one that was ruffling the feathers. I thought I was the one that everybody was looking at and being like, ah, this son of a bitch. Maybe I have fell off. I've been hearing that every now and then. You fell off. Good. At least I was on. That implies that people thought I was on for a second. Anyways. Over the weekend, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau expressed his outrage that Canadian Muslims are thinking for themselves and expressing what? strong disagreement with moves to normalize radical sexual teachings in schools. 
Leave our kids alone. Leave our kids alone. Many immigrant communities supported Trudeau. And now what's he saying? He's saying the Muslims are being brainwashed. We've always had a concern. If what's happening in our schools is getting worse and worse and worse. And now they've crossed the red line. Our children are our red line. Rather than perhaps... Rec I like that. I like that the, the Muslims are like, they're rising up. They've had enough. That is funny, you know? That is funny because Big Trudy, he's a, he was a big fan. He likes dressing up like them. He likes going over to India and shaking his tail, tail feathers all dressed up in Bollywood gear, you know? He is a fan of their costumes, but not so much their people. I'm, I'm a Fox News anchor. That's the problem, okay? He loves their, he loves to culturally appropriate their cultures. But boy, oh boy, does he ever hate that they're thinking for themselves. They're being brainwashed by the American alt-right. Considering his nation's lurch to push these transgender and non-binary propaganda <laughs> things on kids, Trudeau pulled Jesus, she sounds like she needs a hole. You know, like just a, get a cherry hole. It sounds like my grandma fucking trying to, you know, you, you ever have your, you, your smoking grandma try and tell you, give you a life lesson? Oh, yeah, let me tell you a little something about Christ. You silly little fucker. You can't go ahead and steal candy bars from the Muslim guy running the corner store. I didn't raise you like that. Plus, that guy's an all right fascist, just like you and I. He be watching Fox News just like you and I, you silly little son of a bitch. You can't steal from the Muslim. Rob the queer kid. That's who you got to be stealing from. Come over here, sit on grandma's knee. You got to go up and beat the tranny and take its last $5. And steal its hormone pills and sell it to another tranny. What are you doing? Then go buy the chocolate bar from the all right Muslim. He be watching Fox News. We like her poo down there at the Mac store. Hillary. Yeah, he blames the vast right wing conspiracy. Ah. There is an awful lot of misinformation. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's my favorite thing right now is misinformation. You know, th that's the joy in Canada is now we don't even get any information. So forget misinformation. We don't get any information from our own media on social media. That's fun. Google and Facebook are now slowly implementing the blocking of news on uh, Canadian or Canadian news, sorry, on social media apps and including Google, which is hilarious that they're still like, eh, misinformation. We're so far behind everything. That's the thing. Canadian media moves very slow. We do point our, uh, our uh, attention down to the States and we really, really, really try to... Uh, Stir that up up here. And nobody, we're just too dumb to really grasp on what's happening in America. Instead, we just use the buzzwords from, from uh, CNN and these uh, other, other news sources to try and draw an emotion out of Canadians. Because usually we're just like, oh, yeah, no, that's fucking a little upsetting, isn't it? Oh, yeah, God damn it. I can't believe that the news isn't really. That's okay. I guess I got to go and buy the paper again. You know, like there's always, we try and find the, 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 the resolution to it in such a dumb, profound way. Well, that's okay. I guess I got to go down and get the Edmonton Sun from the Mac store again and support that Muslim that's uh, watching Fox News. Oh, boy. Well, I guess that they're going to be making an extra buck or two because I'm going to have to get a coffee, right? Fuck, eh? And fucking misinformation. That's going to be the next thing that's shoved down our throats, right? Misinformation. And it's like, Canadians now have like a, we can fall back a little bit and be like, what fucking information? We're not even getting any. What are you talking about? Oh, and then Big Trudy will have to come out and be like, well, uh, uh, you know, your uh, favorite uh, social media uh, influencer uh, is spreading uh, lies. Uh, this fucking doorknob. Uh, people on social media, particularly fueled by the American right wing, are uh, 
spreading a lot of untruths. These are people in the far right who have consistently stood against Muslim rights in the Muslim community. But they are weaponizing the issue of LGBT. Of <laughs> right. I wonder what it's like living in that world. You know, I wish I was so wealthy I was tone deaf to the public. I, I want that. I do. I truly want that for myself because I want to know what it feels like just to talk insanely to a group of people who are in the mix. They're in the shit, right? This guy's floating above it and he heads comes out and tries to like point and be like, no, you're a fucking idiot. That's essentially what he's saying. You're a fucking idiot and you're being indoctrinated by the far right when instead you should be allowing trannies to be reading books to your kids while they're drunk hanging out of a fucking lace, a set of lace panties, you know? I don't know what's happening, but I will say it is highly entertaining, you know? Do I have the answer in the re uh, the the answer to solve most of this? No, 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 no. These are ramblings of a moron. This is a this is a complete idiot that has a microphone and a camera and sits here and spews his garbage on this podcast weekly. Okay? Weekly. And you can get it early on the Patreon episode. Patreon.com slash DakerCast69. The only way with fucking because I can't imagine any sponsorships are coming down the pipe anytime soon, you know? You can only say faggot and retard so many times before they're like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Of course, the angle was the first in cable to showcase Muslim parents, those who are fed up with sexual indoctrination squads and who are now working with social conservatives to stop the madness. Now, as for Trudeau, he's Here in his go. job for one reason, his last name. Well, maybe, maybe for another, maybe for his hair. It's pretty good. Now, per You know... Why don't they give me the job at Fox News? I would make this way more entertaining. Because, uh, well, you know, maybe his hair. Maybe his hair. Maybe his hair. What are we talking about here, folks? We need to respect this man for the ability that he is able to camouflage himself in many different forms. This guy could go undercover as Yag Meet Singh. Nobody would fucking know. That's how good he is. He's like a CIA agent that just disappears into a crowd. You would never even know he was there. You give him five minutes. They See, we like to sh shit on him for being a drama teacher. You know, we like to shit on him. But he's on the cover of the Rolling Stone? My God. Justin Trudeau, why can't he be our president? Why can't he be the first truly black president? Wouldn't that be something? Obama was just not black enough. Big Trudy, you give him a paint roller and a bucket of shoe polish, <coughs> you might fuck around and think that's goddamn Malcolm X up there. You might think Malcolm X, you might start thinking that Malcolm X is at the podium right now and you're like, holy fuck, are they doing the same thing they did with Tupac at Coachella? Is this a hologram? Was Malcolm X, oh, never mind, it started raining, it's just big Trudy in his middle of the fucking, oh, he got us again. Personally, I love my Canadian friends and it's a gorgeous place. Shut up. But we're not about to take moralistic lectures from people who allow China to directly influence their elections. That's what we're talking about right there. To push more people to kill themselves or to turn truckers into public enemies number one. Oh, yeah. Trudeau is a rather silly, fatuous man who touts multiculturalism but really wants a dictatorship of ideas. Anyone who challenges his sacred cows may be canceled punished, or, in some cases, even jailed. Ooh. Nice try, Justin. We've roughed uh, Ooh, jailed. Mmm. She is right. She is right. Because if you've been paying attention to uh, uh, Jeremy McKenzie, he's been debanked. He's on house arrest. He can't move. They've tried. They tried. Uh, they've tried numerous times to take that gentleman down. I do respect a man that that is so in, uh, uh, rooted in his thinking 
you know, I'm not saying I disagree with uh, Mr. McKenzie. I would never say that. But I respect somebody that goes to the extent that he does. Regardless, you know, regardless if you like him or not, you have to respect somebody that is that will go that far, you know, that will go that far. And speaking of media being... Um, being squashed here in Canada. Let's listen to none other than Pablo Rodriguez, who is, what's his title again? He is, oh Jesus, he's the Minister of Canadian Heritage and a Quebec Lieutenant. Mm, isn't that a nice? He goes on CNN to talk about this Putin. unnecessary or the link tax that is absolutely necessary, which has now caused Canadian media to be squashed from your algorithm. Mm, let's listen to what he has to say, this jackass. If you can just explain for our audience exactly what you want to see out of this. Legislation is there now. You want these organizations to negotiate. What do you hope will then happen to the Canadian news landscape? Yeah, it's important to know that 80% of all ad revenues is going to two companies in Canada, Google and Facebook. So it's about 10 billion out of 13 billion. Because of that, money is not going to all those traditional news outlets. Those, those media that, that... One thing he's not mentioning is that there is a lot of government subsidies and handouts to these large media outlets that are failing immensely. They are tanking themselves. I mean, who in the right mind, besides me, okay? I don't know who else out there in the Uncle Heck podcast universe that's seeking out articles from Global News. I love me, Global News. That is a, that's like taking a handful of just brain-dead women and putting them in a room and seeing what they can drum up that day. Seeing what blog posts they can come up. Where can we get some clicks, right? And he thinks that this is necessary, that we got to siphon off a little bit of that cash into the government, right? We need that money going into these media outlets that have been subsidized by the Canadian government, your tax dollars, I may say. And now they've shot themselves in the foot. Now you can't even get the fucking news. So now those ad, uh, that ad revenue that they were getting before when you'd click on their article and you know the little pop-ups that are in between the articles, they would make money from that. Every time you click and there was a view on that, those media outlets are then paid by those ad agencies, and that's how they make a little bit of that money, okay? Now these retards, these fucking full-blown morons, have caused them to make no money! Wow! That's how good they are! The Canadian government is so good at pissing money away, they cause other people to lose money. God, I wish I was that good! We need in a democracy, independent, free, non-partisan newsrooms are disappearing. Uh, I would say it's the same in the United States. I've read somewhere recently that two newspapers are closing their door every week, sometimes small ones. But those small papers are playing a very big role in their own community. Local news matter. So what we're saying here is that we want a bill where the government is arm's length. We're simply putting a table in the middle of a room. We're sitting the web tech giants on one side, Google, Facebook. And the media outlets on the other side, and they have to get to agreements. If not, they go to final arbitration. It's very simple. Oh, big words from nobody, from somebody that holds no power. That's the joy up here in Canada. That's the joy of being Canadian. You don't even get your own news cycle anymore. Uh, I seen something. See, what I like to do when I'm laying in bed at night is I put on a YouTube video of some sort and I kick my feet up. I enjoy my evening and I soak in various YouTube channels content, right? And I, I enjoy myself. I like some of the stuff that it's spitting out to me. And a lot of, I get the conspiracy theory. I get like way of life, all sorts of nonsense. And I was watching one from the Appalachians. And uh, before this, I don't. Talk. Grammarly Go is nope. the only generative. Nope. Don't do that. Is he right? Okay. With one download. See, 
Here we go. Got it. See, this, this video right here is from the poorest region of America and what it really looks like. And they, they, they do this little kind of street interview with this guy. And it was, uh, it, it was very compelling, passionate, uh, small town America, similar to small town Canada, right? A lot of, a lot of government decision making affects the way of life. That's why I fucking miss is like, uh, uh, sorry. That's why I miss like small town Canada, small town America. It's so nice. It's refreshing to be around those types of folks because the city is just a, it's a madness of, uh, morons all around you all the time. You know, we're in a small town. There's a, there's a feeling, there's a, there's a, this nice warmth that comes from around from knowing your neighbor and the effect of the economy really hammers down on some of these folks. And then something is something as simple as natural resources. And you get these losers that stand in traffic and we're like holding their signs. It's nice to see also that they're getting beat up. I like that. I like seeing that. That makes me happy. Fuck off. Okay. Fuck off. Nothing more annoying than some idiot with a sign in the middle of the street just standing there, right? You just, you wish the law would look the other way and you could mow them over, right? You wish that that could be a part of our culture here, you know? Maybe it might get to that. Maybe, maybe, maybe we could dream, but... A lot of industry in the small towns is a lot of, uh, you know, in, in this particular town in West Virginia is coal mining. And when uh, the hippies and the dipshits, I shouldn't even say the hippies, I should say the morons in suits start making decisions, it affects everybody on a, on a grand scale. And, and this guy says something very unique and very interesting that, that piqued my attention. You know, um, so we're going to listen to this guy talk and I'm going to shut the fuck up because I find this nice. It's refreshing. Do you think people in the country don't understand coal, coal work that well? Or what are your they thoughts don't. on that? Working in coal mines, even if it's underground or on top of the ground, it's hard work. Uh, you go out 10, 12 hours a day. If you go underground, you don't see daylight until the end of your shift. Yeah. You work out over top of the ground, you got the heat, you got trucks, you got inspectors you got to deal with. It's not an easy job. A lot of people don't understand it. If it wasn't for coal mines, a lot of these people around here would be starving to death. They wouldn't have electricity, they wouldn't have heat. And here you got the government and everybody wanting to shut the coal mines down, do away with this, do everything electric. Well, you got to have coal to run electric plants. And a lot of steamships have to have coal to run to transport goods back and forth. Mm -hmm. well, and a lot coal. of your coal goes to China, right? Yeah. It's just, you got to learn the people, you got to learn the culture. And with people out here, everybody thinks we're just dumb country folk. But actually, a lot of us out here are smarter than a lot of people give us credit for. Yeah. We work hard, we support our families, and we don't let nobody step in between that. People out here will bend over backwards to help you. They'll give you a shirt off your back. As long as you don't make them mad or cross them. Out here, a man's word and his handshake is his bond. That hasn't gone away? No. A lot of places around here hasn't. Thanks, you guys. Right there. A man's word and his handshake is his bond. Oh, that makes me happy. You know what? Like, see, this is where I fucking cannot stand these stupid goddamn male bro influence right there that's a guy right there you know those are the folks that do need to be shedding this knowledge out onto the fucking world instead we got these dorks you know these dorks that drive me up the fucking wall they irritate me so much to you, you know first off you got the losers buying the courses to teach you how to be a man i'm gonna teach you how to be a man uh, you know and then on top of it, you got the morons making the courses, right? And it's just a, it's just, it's just this dumb cycle. And then you forget that the, 
the one making the money selling the courses, you're the punk. You're the one. You're his target. You're He's selling you something. And we don't wrap our mind. This guy right here, old school. I love the old school. That is magnificent, you know? He's just willing to help somebody. You know, there's no, well, I'm on I'm going to need you to give me $25 and I'll teach you exactly how to do that. And I know before you start coming at me, well, Uncle Hack, you charge people $25, come see your show. Yeah, but I'm not trying to teach you anything. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there telling stupid fucking jokes. Okay. They're dumbass little jokes. We get you out. You come out, have a good time. You get some entertainment watching three fucking jack offs on stage. Show. <laughs> Look at my cook. My cook is like, right? But I like this 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 type of dude. That's a fucking man right there in my head. You know, well, some people when they hear the word man, they think of uh, the the podcasters. You know, like the podcasters that sit around and they're like, "Listen, you dumb whore." Although I do appreciate that. I'm not going to sit here and be like, "Ah, oh, that's fucking retarded." I do think it's retarded, but I appreciate it. There's just you know, this guy works his ass off. Gets up every morning, does his bullshit, doesn't mean he likes it, but he does his bullshit because he has to make a living, right? And like these lessons can all be learned. You young guys, that's what I am fucking wish I could just instill it in your brain to like, Andrew Tate, Top G, fucking suck my horn, Top, top G, Top G sold you a fucking course, you mark, you moron. I'll show you how to get rich. Right, yes. I'll tell you what, I I, I, I've, I got curious one time and I was like, uh, this is before all this, all, before it really ramped up, before even TikTok. And uh, you can call me a mark. You can call me a fucking queer for doing this. I don't care. But I got curious, right? Because I was always reading some shit about uh, digital marketing and whatnot. I got curious. And then I stumbled across this guy who was selling a course and it was like 300 fucking dollars. So I just signed up for the email and I knew that because of like what I read that there is a email funnel and eventually it'll get to a price that seems somewhat reasonable. That $300 course then after five emails became a $5 course. Okay. It was like 25 or $5, I can't remember. But enough, like, not enough to where I was like, Jesus Christ, I ain't paying that. I can only imagine the morons that are paying three. This is a three, this is valued at $300. Just a number that you can pull out of your ass, slap it on it, and be like, that's worth that, okay? And then I get the course, I believe it was called The Lazy Millionaire. And the first course that he shows, right, is eating healthy, and going to the gym. Well, that just excuses the whole lazy part. You know, you got to get on a schedule. You're lazy. And then that's when I started to dawn on me, this shit is all a sham. And this guy wakes up, and, and I, I have a feeling that he possibly knows that, you know, working in the coal mines, I'm not going to be a millionaire one day, but I have a decent enough life out here in West Virginia, and I don't care what everybody thinks, that they have a perception of me, but I, I, I do my day-to-day -day duties, I help my fellow neighbors out. That's the simple things of just being a guy, right? But that also comes with a community where everybody knows one another, right? Now you get these big centers and it's just a fucking disaster. Like I said, you just go downtown, you load up the kids and you go and uh, soak in the entertainment that the city has to offer you. Where here, I imagine that they have a few crackheads running around, just a couple that, you know, maybe they lost their job, the mine fired them. Now they got no means of work. So what do you turn to? An escape. Totally understandable. But the, those ones aren't as entertaining. They stay in a place. They're locked in a shed out in the back country, smoking crack in the Appalachian Mountains. You know what I mean? Not very entertaining because you don't get to watch it and witness it. Where you go down to the downtown core, and there you go. You got one that's just got a shopping cart of things that you didn't even know exists in this world. And, 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 and together, why would you have them all together? Like half a lampshade, a broken broomstick, a, a, about 18 jackets, a, a garbage bag full of cans, and then like 
one of those cigarette uh, uh, those cigarette butt uh, ashtrays that 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 they put on the street in front of bars. He's got one of them in there. All sorts of shit. You wonder where they get it all and fit it in there. Some of the best Tetris playing or by crackheads in shopping carts. You know to get that much shit stacked up inside them. It's it's truly amazing. But I I loved what he said. We're gonna rewind that just slightly and listen to that one more time because so it'll resonate. We support our families, and we don't let nobody step in between that. People out here will bend over backwards to help you. They'll give you a shirt off your back, as long as you don't make them mad or cross them. Out here, a man's word and his handshake is his bond. That hasn't gone away? No. A lot of places around here hasn't. God Thanks damn. Again. That's gangster. That's old school. That's that old school mentality, you know? You can talk as much shit as you want. You know, I come on here and I talk a lot of shit. That's what I do. That's what I do. I'm an idiot, right? But I appreciate this. You know, if I said I was going to do something, I always try, I do my damnedest to make sure I do it to the best of my goddamn ability. And if I'm going to be a fucking podcaster, I'm going to try my fucking hardest at it, okay? Sometimes the show sucks, which we'll talk about later. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes we make you laugh. Sometimes I bang my dick on the fucking table trying to make something out of nothing. And does it happen? Every now and then. Only because I am the king of jackasses. That's why. But I respect the fuck out of gentlemen like that. That's, that, that's what we're missing these days. Instead, we're turning to these fucking social media retards, right? I hate all of it. I hate the fact that I have to do this to build a career in comedy. You know? Because CBC Comedy is not knocking on my door anytime soon. Just for laughs, they ain't calling. All these Canadian festivals that people build careers off of, long gone. So I got to resort to building this my, myself with the help of like the audience. Share my stuff is what I'm saying. No, I'm fucking around. D do if you would like. No, I would truly appreciate that. But... That's the that's the joy of doing it on your own, you know? You you get to you get to carve out a little bit of a, a path that you can do and and meanwhile flip off everybody that you surpass, you know? Cuz maybe that day will come where I get a call from these and I get to say, "Hey, I get to take a picture of my cock and send it to him and be like, "I hope the mouth is open." Cuz this is incoming. All right? Send me the fucking emoji where the mouth is looks like the home alone emoji oh you know what i mean because it's going in and we're not even hard right now that's your job get it hard i did something that uh most people would say you know what hack why would you do something like that why would you do something like that i went to cameo i got my first cameo folks and I got to say, I am so excited to share it with you. It's, oh, oh, I gave away a little bit. If you'd like to join our Telegram chat, please do so. Uh, you can share all sorts of horse shit. You can share all sorts of, I can oh, oh, how do we go to full screen mode? I couldn't make this shit up even if I fucking Fuck I couldn't make this shit up even if I fucking tried Oh yeah The wormiest the dirt Hold on Hold on, okay Can I download this? I couldn't make God damn it Telegram, you fucking blow sometimes, you know? I'm just going to fill some dead air while we're here and talk. So what I did as I went to Cameo and I got myself a nice little Cameo, I kind of ruined the surprise for some of you that uh, were probably excited to be like, who is it? Who, who did you get to do a Cameo? That is absolutely fucking crazy. We're just going to save this. Uh, there we go. And none other than the show's biggest fan was was uh, was available on Cameo, and I got this. 
That's what I do. You know what I mean? Like if, if, if I enjoy somebody, you see, that's how good I am. I'm able to get under people's skin without saying their name. They understand what I'm doing, right? I, I, I'll, I'll admit I may have mocked this individual's content a little bit, but then I supported them as well by, by, by purchasing a cameo. You know, that's how good of a human I am. I may mock you, but I'll dish a little coin back your way to just be kind enough. And I got myself a fucking cameo from none other than our boy. Let's play it. Let's listen to it all the way through. All the way through our fucking the king himself. I couldn't make this shit up even if I fucking tried the wormiest the dirtiest past dudes always want to come for me it's like they know i have something in the chamber and they want to test me i got this new guy uncle hack coming oh. for you come on big dog you don't think i don't know about you the same uncle hack that tried to rip off nelk boys oh. drive around and party for a living you damn right getting up every small town in alberta trying to make a dollar the same uncle hack that was 23 years old and fuck the 14 year old girl. Whoa. The innocent 14 year old girl. You got her super drunk and fucked her. I did that? that? Uncle Hack? The sex offender, Uncle Hack? Perfect, big dog. Let's just make sure your past isn't as dirty as yours is before taking shots. I didn't even know sex offenders <laughs> were allowed on TikTok. Too many kids on this app. Anyways, big dog, how's that comedian career going? Awful. That's right, it's not. Time to level up, big dog. Let's go. That's right. I'm deeply offended that he he's claiming that I had sex with a 14 year old girl when I was 23 years old. You know that that part hurt. That part got me. That really hit me in the gut because first off, that's way too old. That is extremely too old. The fuck the that's a woman at that point. Unreal. I can't believe you would say that. I thought you got to, if you're going to try and go younger at 23, I did that. How embarrassing hack. Jesus. This guy's got files on you, but I paid for this. Keep in mind, I paid for this. This is a cameo. I went out of my way. I was like, hey, I need you to slick your hair back as tight as tight to your skull as I possibly can. And make sure there's enough saliva in your mouth that you can paint the fucking camera with just a coat of spit. And I was like, make it good. Make it good. Make this everlasting. Okay? That's what I need. Uh, I need me a nice cameo, something that I can use to promo on the show. I've been sitting on this for a minute, and I was like, fuck, do I show the fans? Do I admit that I paid for some uh, influencer, some celebrity? And I gotta, I gotta, I'm handcuffed here. I gotta fucking, you know, this is Uncle Hack in the wild. That's what they're telling me. You know, this is, this is the vibe on the street when you pay for it, right? One of the better cameos I think you could ever get in this world. Oops. And that's what I do. I support influencers. That's what I do. I support influencers in their, in their hustle, in their grind. That's what I do. That's what I get up to. You know, because I'm a kind guy. I'm a very nice guy. What else did he go on? Let's listen to it one more time. Because you know what? I got to get my money's worth out of this. You know? I didn't, I didn't fucking just pay this to listen for you guys to listen to it once. You know? I paid for this to be listened to twice on this podcast. I'm going to make this shit up even if I fucking tried. The <laughs> I like how he has to... Uh, preload it with that. I got to, I got to set the premise. I can't even make this up if I tried. I can't even make it up if I tried. The dirtiest past dudes always want to come for me. They say past or patch. Dirtiest past, dirtiest past, probably dirtiest past. They know I have something in the chamber and they want to test me. I got this new guy. I, uh, I will say, you know what? I do like that he's following the format that I set in place, you know, sitting in the pickup truck, very conservative way of going about it, right? We all know the conservative leaning folk, they love to sit in the truck. They love to air their thoughts out inside the pickup truck. I like that. That was my model. I started that. That's my shit. I started that. 
Uncle Hawk coming for you. Come on, big dog. You don't think I don't know about you? The same Uncle Hawk that tried to rip off Nelk Boys, drive around and party for a living, hitting up every small town in Alberta trying to make... You know what? Not a bad way to make a living, if I'm being honest. I don't know how that one's a dig. You know, it's these recently reformed alcoholics that really try to instill that they're so great because they finally quit drinking. It's almost like you got you got two ways to go about it, right? It's like drug addicts finding Jesus in a way. And it becomes overly annoying. In the beginning, you're like, you're very proud. You're like, thank God. I'm glad you're clean. You're sober. And then they're always like, yeah, but I got to, don't thank me. Thank the Lord and Savior. And you're like, for fuck's sakes, enough, right? And and then there's like the other route where you got to find something to replace the alcoholism and the partying and this lifestyle. So you got to like lie to yourself that this this stuff that, that happened in the past. Because I'll admit, you know what? I do, nothing I loved more than getting fucked up stumbling around downtown trying to figure it out it's like how am i getting home am i gonna eat a eat a fucking shawarma puke it up in my bathtub there was a lot of decision making happening in the moment and it was very carefree and in a very fun lifestyle you know what i mean like there's not it is great i've spent the past couple of years fucking promoting this it's a tagline on of our brand for christ's sakes i can't sit back here and be like jesus look at me look how great i am no it's just like i had to replace it with something and it was comedy now people come to a club and they listen to my dumb thoughts i write them all down and i go and perform them numerous times and i try and make people laugh to supplement the excitement of being in a nightclub now I just get to do it in a comedy club. The moods changed. The vibes changed a little bit. You know, people come out, they come for a laugh, some chicken wings and a draft beer to enjoy themselves. And like, I just, unfortunately, I, I don't think I'd be able to handle the road as, as, as much as I do now living a bit more cleaner lifestyle, but I don't trying to pressure anybody. Yeah out here driving around partying for a living. That's a fucking great way to make a buck. If I was doing it in New York City, his tune would change, you know, except it was in Retlaw, Alberta. We're going to Green Prairie, you know. Kelowna was pretty cool, though. We did have like a, a boat party and there were strippers on there and a stag and things got crazy. It was a lot of fun. We got fucked up. Plus, like. All the good stories are always like, yeah, I was drinking the one day and fucking next thing you know, I got, uh, you know, and then uh, fuck, I was fucked up. They always start like that. We were fucking loaded last weekend and you're not going to believe what happened. And then you, that's when you suck in my attention. Then I'm like, do tell. What do you got for me? Anyways. Dollar, the same Uncle Hack that was 23 years old and fucked a 14 year old girl, an innocent 14 year old girl. <laughs> can't be that innocent <laughs> oh boy <laughs> uh, am i going hard enough for you now am i am i fucking making the jokes again jesus this guy's got a fucking rap sheet on me 23 14 though like i think the, i think we can all agree that is a bit old and a girl ew I'm Catholic, buddy. I'm Catholic. It was, a, it was an eight-year-old boy in a wig. That's what that was. That movie, Sound of Freedom, was about me. I run the biggest. I run, I run the biggest ring up here. Pedo Pete, back on, back on duty. I lost half the audience right now because they just they. Some places we go, you start throwing around some some. Jokes in those waters, button up tight. They button up tight. That's not fucking funny. That isn't fucking funny. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, Mr. Fucking Freedom of Speech. Oh, <laughs> but this is how good is this cameo? Our super drunk and fucked her. That Uncle Huck, the sex offender Uncle Huck. Perfect, big dog. Let's just make sure your past isn't as dirty as yours is before taking shots. I didn't even know 
sex offenders were allowed on TikTok. Jesus Christ, if I ever need my lawn watered, I'll call this guy up to do a TikTok. Oh, for fuck me. There's a lot of spit flying out of there. More spit than me on this podcast. If me and him got into a verbal argument, we could fucking, we could stop a crop shortage in California. Why do you got your sunglasses on? That's the funny part is uh, a lot of morons like this. I'll get real for like a second. I love morons like this that go to the internet immediately. And you know what? You can take shots at me all day long. I don't care. But, but let's say I was a dickhead, a bigger dickhead than I actually am. Texas law states defamation of character can lead up to... Uh, a very decent payout. I mean, we've seen it with Alex Jones, right? We've seen it with Alex Jones. He got a night. He, he had his bank account hit pretty hard. And the statute of limitations in Texas is about a year. So maybe in about a year's time, we got to revisit this and see how well my friend is doing over here with his cameo account. And take a little dip into his funds. You know, it just depends on how bad the comedy career is going, you know? I mean, he asked, what did you ask? Dog, too many kids on this app. Anyways, big dog, how's that comedian career going? Well, we'll find out in a year. That's when we'll find out. That's when we'll know, ladies and gentlemen. I will know in a year on how well this whole comedy thing is doing, on whether or not I need to dip into the Texas state of law and try and siphon off, uh, siphon off a few of them Fucking Zoom calls this guy's selling. That's right, it's not. Time to level up, big dog. Let's Why didn't oh. he... I put a request in that he'd punch the camera, but he didn't do that. That's an, that's upsetting. I want a refund. I want, the one, I want one of those ones where he does the uppercut. That's what I want. You know, those are, those are good videos. Every guy. I couldn't make the... Okay, that's enough. We get it. You couldn't make it up if you tried. Boy. That's what good hard-earned dollars. That's what your money on the Patreon is going to. Me buying cameos like that. And with that being said, you know what? That's our first edition of Hate Video. Huh? And with that being said, welcome to podcasting's greatest segment, Hate Mail. Right? We love Hate Mail. We love everything to do with it. Oops, what's going on here? God, a show that falls apart right in front of your eyes. That's the joy of being a part of this endeavor that I'm on. What is happening? All I have is just garbage. Email me, uncleack at dangercats.tv. Oh my God, I have... I hate this so much. I hate it. Email me. Uncle Hack at DangerCats.tv with your hate mail. And we'll read it on the show for fuck's sakes. Because we love hate mail. It's some of our favorite. It's the greatest thing to ever happen to podcasting. Anyways, our first our first order of business here with the hate mail. Good day, Uncle Hack, you absolute DJ piss bag. Love the pod as always, and lately you've been ripping on some good points. I'm a proud Albertan, and like yourself from small town Alberta, God's country, to uh, so to say. What in the ever lo loving fuck is going on with these males these days? LS being pussies from these small towns, but trying to claim. They are country tough. These little boys are softer than Charm and Two Ply and one tenth as useful. All looking for a TikTok dance or the ever stupid uh, sit in their truck and play a pity party, woe is me video. You know the ones I'm talking about. Do I ever? The, I just paid for one. These people need to seriously step up and be the type of man they are trying to portray. Country men and cowboys are some of the best forms of masculinity, and those little shitbag cum drops are ruining it. 
Congrats on the USA adventure. I appreciate that. And the great stand-up success you're seeing. Your hard work is paying off. Come a long way, my man. But perhaps we can get a few of the old Oilfield Rants posts back for the boys. I said it last email, and I'll say it again. We need you back in the Mac for a show. Have a great day. And tell people to see Sound of Freedom. Cheers. Just to know, uh, just another Berta boy fed up with the progressive liberal cuck pussy shit. That's what I'm talking about, baby. That's some fucking hate mail, baby. So we like. Get it off your chest. Get it off your chest. I will say it is rather annoying seeing the, the nonsense that, you know, maybe I do got to go back. I, I think I got to get, I got to do it in a new way because there's nothing more annoying than somebody that just goes to pander, you know? And I, I feel like that's how it would come across as I'm pandering um, with the content to try and draw an audience again by by putting on blue call uh, coveralls and, hey, we'll vote here in the patch, yeah. You know, I'd, I'd just be looking to pander to an audience, but I, I got to find a new, different way. You know, maybe I'm being too, too uh, observant on what it needs to be, but that's the joy of this. You don't understand art. Dear Uncle Hack, I wanted to take a moment to share my thoughts on the latest episode of the Uncle Hack podcast. As an avid viewer and a fan of your work, I must admit that I found this particular episode somewhat disappointing. While I appreciate the humor and comedic, uh, comedic elements presented, I couldn't help but feel that it lacked the unique, stupid, retarded, funny quality that I have come to associate with your podcast. The episodes seem to be missing the outrageous and side-splitting moments that used to have me laughing uncontrollably. Oh, no. Uncle Hack. You have always lived up to the hack part of your name. Thank you. And that part of what made your podcast so special. The old Uncle Hack had an act for pushing boundaries and delivering comedy that would leave me in stitches, often to the point of tears. Oh my, interesting. I found myself reminiscing about those hilarious moments and longing for that level of comedy in the latest episode. I know that creativity and humor can evolve over time, and I understand that you may be trying out different approaches, but as a longtime fan, I just wanted to express my fondness for the old Uncle Hack, who had me particularly pissing my pants with laughter. Your unique brand of comedy is what made me, uh, what made your podcast so special to me. I find it offensive. Oh no, that you would dare grow as a person and a comedian. I want the Doc Brown treatment. Let's go back in the debt and the time, Daddy, to the good old days. Chase the dragon with me, please. Know that I am still a devoted fan and believe in your talent as a comedian. I genuinely hope to see you return to the side-splitting, pants-pissing laughter that your podcast has provided in the past. I have no doubt that with your creativity and wit, you can continue to deliver exceptional and unforgettable comedic experiences. Thank you for your dedication to the, to the Uncle Hag podcast. I look forward to the future episodes that might recapture the magic of the earlier days, keep pushing boundaries, and staying true to your new community style p.s soundboards are silly and fun and that's unacceptable you should be ashamed of yourselves of yourself warm regards justin trudeau big trudy fan of the show you know what we do praise him around here N not enough i will be voting for him till the end of time because i need to sell what is happening i need to sell fucking blackface Trudeau t-shirts. Oh, I wonder why that's happening. Anyways, dear danger cats, I don't know why I listen to your show, but I got to say, if you don't vote, how can you complain? Get out and vote, you dope. But on a side note, I do find your commentary entertaining and appreciate uh, having a pretty much sane voice in the world. Sane is a stretch. Anyways, take care and vote, you prick. Bye. Darian, aka Blah Sheep. Why don't I vote and why, and how can I complain? Simple. Because I didn't choose any of these morons that I want to vote for. You know what I mean? So when you have nerds up there begging for your acceptance and your vote, and the only time that it seems to matter is when election season is on the rise or when they're trying to raise some money for their little campaign, 
that's when their interest in you starts to accumulate. You know, that's why I have a difficult time sitting here and being like, I love this guy. He's my favorite. But then I look at them and be like, is that a guy that I would trust to, I don't know, be at the top of the mine and yell down when it's time for me to fucking, when there's saving to be had? No, none of them. None of them. I seen Big Trudy trying to use a hammer and a nail and it was pathetic. Then you got fucking, what's Pierre doing? He took his glasses off to try and appeal to everybody. The guy looks like he just got beat up, you know? Like, it's nerds. It's a nerd convention. That's all it is. If, if it wasn't for politics, they'd probably be, be arguing on which Star Wars is better, you know? There would be some sort of argument to be had. They'd be playing D&D in a secret basement location at a card shop. That's the problem I have. I don't look at any of them and be like, that's a noble leader right there. So I think I've, I've got every right to complain. Give me somebody with some substance to vote for. That's all I'm saying. Well, actually, uh, Justin Trudeau, Mr. Speaker, you know what I mean? Like, it's embarrassing. As a man, it's embarrassing apologizing for a fucking t-shirt that says straight pride. It's embarrassing when your leader has done blackface more times than probably his voting, uh, his voter base has gotten laid, you know? So I have a difficult time looking at either of them and being like, that's the one. So I think I deserve every right to complain. And with that being said, you can listen to me complain next week Thursday at 3 p.m. Or if you'd like to listen to me complain longer or more, head on over to the Patreon and get yourselves an extra episode of the Uncle Hack Podcast. Congratulations to the winner, Anissa Reimer of the Cooler Scooter. You know, some of you missed out on a brilliant opportunity to win uh, a, a scooter that could probably, you know, skirt you past a DUI, you know? probably get you past the DUI, but no, 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 you missed the opportunity. But if uh, you'd like an extra episode of the Uncle Hack podcast, or you'd like to be a, pa a Danger Dog Patreon producer of the show and have your name roll up in the end credits, isn't that crazy? Isn't that nice? Because like I said earlier, it's not like any sponsorships are knocking on my fucking door. Anyways, uh, now that I've done the uh, politician portion of the show by begging for your money, I want to wish you all a great day.